Monday morning to you all. This is another edition of Music on Mondays. I'm Craig Simmons, Minister of Music here at First Church, and our hymn that we're going to be looking at this morning is His Eye is on the Sparrow, a famous gospel song that is probably familiar to many of you. This article was written by Michael Hahn, who is professor of theology at Perkins School in Houston, Texas. Sevilla Durfee Martin was born in Nova Scotia in 1866 and died in Atlanta, Georgia in 1948. In His Eye is on the Sparrow, which she wrote in 1905, she has provided one of the most influential and often recorded gospel hymns of the 20th century. Notable versions include recordings by Shirley Caesar, Marvin Gaye, Kirk Franklin and family, Mahalia Jackson, Sister Rosetta Tharp, Dottie West, and Barbara Mandrell. Sevilla Martin was the daughter of James N. and Irene Harden Holding and was a school teacher with modest musical training. Together with her husband, Walter, they often wrote gospel songs for revival meetings. Be Not Dismayed is also an example of their collaboration. Walter Stillman Martin was a Baptist minister who received his education at Harvard. He later became a member of the Disciples of Christ, teaching at Atlantic Christian College, now Barton College, in Wilson, North Carolina. They moved to Atlanta in 1919, a location that became the base for revivals that he held throughout the United States. The song was obviously inspired by Matthew chapter 6, verse 26. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Later in Matthew, he writes, Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Similar thoughts are cited in Luke 12, verses 6 and 7. Let not your heart be troubled. Sevilla Martin describes the context out of which the hymn was born. Early in the spring of 1905, my husband and I were sojourning in Elmira, New York. We contracted a deep friendship for a couple by the name of Mr. and Mrs. Doolittle, true saints of God. Mrs. Doolittle had been bedridden for 20 years. Her husband was an incurable cripple who had to propel himself to and from his business in a wheelchair. Despite their afflictions, they lived happy Christian lives, bringing inspiration and comfort to all who knew them. One day, while we were visiting with the Doolittles, my husband commented on their bright hopefulness and asked them for the secret of it. Mrs. Doolittle's response was simple. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. The beauty of this simple expression of boundless faith gripped the hearts and fired the imagination of Dr. Martin and me. The hymn, His Eye is on the Sparrow, was the outcome of that experience. The next day, she mailed Charles Gabriel, a composer of famous gospel songs, who wrote a tune for it. The themes of solace in spite of sorrow and a profound sense of being under the watch care of Jesus, who is a constant friend offered the African-American community comfort during the Civil Rights Movement. The refrain seals the theme by offering an apology for singing. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. Words that would speak to everyone, but especially African-Americans. And here is that song, His Eye is on the Sparrow. <laughs> Thank you. 
I hope you know that God does watch over you. He watches over all of us. And I hope this day finds you well and healthy. And I'll see you again next Monday.